This is the second of a series of three videos on the control system for my model train elevator. The first video demonstrated the prototype and showed the logic. This video will give the parts and review the wiring. And the third video will explain how to code the microcontroller for the system. My prototype train elevator control system automatically raises and lowers the train gates turns on and off the track power and actuator, and checks for errors. You can download the parts list by clicking on a link in the video description below. I purchased these electronic components from three different online shoppers. Amazon.com is the fastest and most expensive. eBay.com is slower but usually cheaper. AliExpress.com ships from China and takes weeks, but it's the cheapest by far. Maybe I'm lucky, but I've never received wrong or defective electronics from any of these sources. So now, let's look at the parts. The brain of my train elevator control system is an Arduino microcontroller board. According to the company, Arduino is an open source electronics platform based on easy to use hardware and software for fast prototyping by students without a background in electronics and programming. That includes model railroaders, too. Arduino released the plans of their boards to the public domain to encourage collaboration of expert circuit designers making their own versions to extend and improve the platform. The software is open source as well, so experienced programmers can add custom features in what are called C++ libraries. One such library is used for my project. Over the years, Arduino has offered many different boards, both larger and smaller than the original Uno, and other brands of microcontrollers have hit the market as well. Perhaps my project could have been done better on another board, but I chose an Uno clone because I already had one, knew how to program it, had enough room for it on my layout, and because it was cheap, only $3. The UNO's small footprint packs a lot of features. Its brain is an ATmega 328p microprocessor chip. The board has 14 digital input-output pins, 6 analog input pins, a USB Type-B jack, a DC jack for 7 to 12 volts in, an ICSP header for firmware programming, a power indicator LED, a programmable LED, and a reset button. Six of the UNO's digital pins can be used as pulse width modulation outputs. Pulse width modulation is a way to send variable voltages over a digital signal. The UNO uses pulse width modulation to control the angles of the servo motor arms for my train gates. The UNO has two pins for serial data communications that can slave other devices to the host Arduino. In this case, the other device is a servo motor control module. The SCL pin on the UNO is for the clock line, and the SDA pin is the data line. Tinkering with the UNO is worry-free. To power your UNO for programming, simply connect by USB to your personal computer. For prototyping without the computer, plug in a 9-volt battery to the UNO's power jack. For permanent installations on your layout, plug a 7-12-volt to 12 volt DC power adapter into the UNO's power jack. I bought two UNO accessories for this project. This case will make it easy to mount the UNO on my layout. This expansion board has screw terminals for easy hookup. It plugs into the UNO's digital pin jacks. The case has openings for the expansion board. Two of these micro switches tell the UNO where the train elevator is. I'll mount one switch at the parade level and another at the scenic level. The wire from the UNO goes to the normally open and common terminals of the microswitches. Four of these tiny SG90 servo motor modules will open and close the train gates on my elevator. I'll fabricate gate boards, something like this one, to glue to the servos. The servos come hardwired with standardized three conductor plugs. The three electrical contacts of the plugs are for servo control, plus five volts DC in, and ground. The servos plug directly into this PCA9685 12-bit servo motor control board. The board uses pulse width modulation to control the angles of the servo arms. Let's take a look at the connectors on the PCA9685. There are 16 outputs for plugging in the servos. 
The pins are color coded. I plugged into the outputs numbered 0, 4, 8, and 12, but any of the outputs can be used. There are screw terminals for connecting an external 5 volt DC power supply. This passes power to the four servos. Pins on the end of the control module get connected to the UNO. The VCC pin goes to a 5 volt pin on the UNO. The ground pin goes to a ground on the UNO. The SCL and SDA pins are connected to the same two pins on the UNO. They enable I2C serial communications to slave the servo control board to the UNO. There are two unused pins on the servo control board. They are labeled OE and V+. Relays are a low-tech, cheap, and effective way to switch external electrical circuits. I use two of these two-channel relay modules to switch the power on and off to the actuator, to the elevator track, and to the lead tracks for the parade and scenic levels. The logic side of each two-channel module has pin connectors for GND ground, control in 1, control in 2, and VCC for plus 5 volts DC in. The switching side of each relay has screw terminals for normally open, normally closed, and common. The relay mechanically switches the contacts with a clicking sound. An LED light tells you when the switch is thrown. Four of these TCRT5000 infrared sensor modules will watch over my train elevator to make sure that trains are not blocking the gates. Each module has a blue infrared transmitter next to a black photoelectric eye. If a train is present, the infrared light will be reflected back to the photoelectric eye, tripping the switch and illuminating the onboard LED. There's a tiny potentiometer for adjusting the sensitivity of the electric eye. The wiring pins are labeled DO for the digital output signal, VCC for plus 5 volts DCN, and GND for ground. A fourth pin for analog output is unused. Two AC to DC transformer power supplies are needed. One to supply the Arduino with 9 volts DC power at 2 amps. The other supply powers the servo control module with 5 volts DC at 1 amp. Prototyping means quick and dirty wiring to test electronic circuits, such as my prototype demoed in part 1 of this video series. For prototype wiring, you need a solderless PCB board nicknamed a breadboard. This breadboard has 400 holes for plugging in temporary jumper wires called DuPont jumpers. The rows of DuPont jacks are wired together internally to make it easy to connect things. My prototype uses both male-to-male -male and female-to-female -female DuPont jumpers. I chose two types of cables for permanently wiring my control system. For the servos and sensors, I will use size 22 AWG solid core four conductor cable. Solid core wire is especially good for attaching to screw terminals. For my N-scale DCC track power dropper wires, I'm using size 20 AWG stranded wire. Stranded wire is more flexible and less brittle than solid core wire. However, stranded wire doesn't work well with screw terminals because the strands get mashed by the screws. Tinning the wire ends with solder helps, but an even better and quicker solution is to crimp ferrules onto the stripped wire ends. The connections are rock solid and look good. Now you know about all the electronic parts of my train elevator control system. It's time to take a look at the wiring. This segment focuses only on wiring my train elevator control system. For background info on do-it-yourself electronics, I strongly recommend tuning in to the DroneBot Workshop YouTube channel and website. Links are in the video description below. Bill at DroneBot is a genuine electronics expert. Plus he has a knack for making everything clear and easy to understand. He's my go-to guy when I need help with my electronics. Check out DroneBot for sure. So far in this video you've seen my train elevator control system prototype in action and looked at all the parts. Now let's see how they're hooked up. The brain of our control system is the microcontroller board and Arduino Uno clone. For prototyping and coding, the host personal computer provides 5 volts DC power to the Uno through its USB jack. To power the other parts of the train elevator control system, we use a separate 5 volt DC power supply. We'll use a breadboard to distribute this power to the system. 
The plus or positive lead of the power supply is connected to the red rail on the breadboard. The power supply's minus or negative lead connects to the blue rail on the breadboard. We tie the UNO into this power distribution by plugging a jumper wire from one of the UNO's GND pins to the breadboard's blue rail. This ground wire completes the circuits of the UNO's digital control pins. We are ready to add four SG90 servo motors for the train gates. Gate arms are glued onto the servos. They will close the lead train tracks when the elevator is moving. To manage the four servos, we add a PCA9685 pulse width modulation controller module. The servo's wires are color-coded and have keyed plugs for foolproof hookup to the controller module. The module has 16 inputs numbered 0 through 15. I chose to plug the servos into inputs 0, 4, 8, and 12. The servo controller module gets DC power from the breadboard rails and passes that power to the servos. Connect the V plus screw terminal of the controller module to the red rail of the breadboard and the GND screw terminal of the controller module to the blue rail of the breadboard. The controller module's logic circuit also needs 5 volts DC. Connect the controller module's VCC pin to the red rail of the breadboard and the GND pin to the blue rail of the breadboard. Now we need to add data communication wires for the UNO to command the controller module to raise and lower the servos. Connect the SCL pin on the module to the SCL pin on the UNO. And SDA on the module goes to SDA on the UNO. DroneBot says if you do not have SCL and SDA pins on your UNO, you can use analog pins A5 and A4, respectively. Next comes the micro switches that the elevator trips when it arrives at the parade level or scenic level. The normally open pin of the parade micro switch connects to the UNO's digital pin 2. The common pin of the parade micro switch connects to the blue rail on the breadboard. The normally open pin of the scenic micro switch connects to the UNO's digital pin 3, and the common pin of the scenic micro switch connects to the blue rail on the breadboard. Now let's add four TCRT5000 infrared sensor modules to the train elevator control system. These sensors watch for trains blocking the tracks when the gates need to be lowered. Plug the sensors directly into the open side of the breadboard. Their pins are spaced to align with the holes in the breadboard. Connect the VCC pin of each sensor module to the red rail of the breadboard. Connect the GND pin of each sensor module to the blue rail of the breadboard. The first sensor module guards the left elevator entrance at the parade level. Connect its DO pin to digital pin 4 of the UNO. The second sensor module guards the right elevator entrance at the parade level. It works together with a left parade sensor module, so connect its DO pin to the DO pin of the left parade sensor module. The two sensors for the scenic level follow the same wiring pattern as the parade level. Connect the VCC pin of each sensor to the red rail of the breadboard. Connect the GND pin of each sensor module to the blue rail of the breadboard. Connect the DO pin of the left scenic sensor module to digital pin 5 of the UNO. Connect the DO pin of the right scenic sensor module to the DO pin of the left scenic sensor module. The two sensor modules are paired together to detect trains blocking either scenic level train gate. Now let's add a dual relay module to switch on and off the elevator track power and the actuator motor. Connect the ground pin of the dual relay module to the blue rail of the breadboard. Connect the N1 pin of the dual relay module to digital pin 6 of the UNO. Connect the N2 pin of the dual relay module to digital pin 7 of the UNO. Connect the VCC pin of the dual relay module to the red rail of the breadboard. Another dual relay module controls track power to the parade and scenic lead tracks. Its connections mimic those of the other module we already installed. Connect the GND pin of this dual relay module to the blue rail of the breadboard. Connect the N1 pin of the dual relay module to digital pin 8 of the UNO. 
connect the N2 pin of the dual relay module to digital pin 9 of the UNO. Connect the VCC pin of the dual relay module to the red rail of the breadboard. The only thing missing from our train elevator control system is a red light emitting diode to flash when trains are blocking the gates. LEDs have plus and minus leads that must be identified properly to connect to the circuit. Connect the shorter minus lead of the LED to the blue rail of the breadboard. Connect the longer plus lead of the LED to either end of a 1000 ohm resistor. Connect the resistor's remaining lead to digital pin 10 of the UNO. This resistor protects the LED from power surges. Wiring the prototype of my train elevator control system is now complete. By taking it step by step, we made a complex system easier to understand. Download this wiring diagram by clicking on the link in the video description below. This concludes episode 2 covering the parts and wiring of my train elevator control system. Stay tuned to Bethany Branch Line and Nscale for episode 3 of this video series, in which I'll explain how to code the Arduino and how to adapt the prototype for permanent installation on my train layout. Thanks for watching!